all right let's get right into the meeting today i uh, will start with a word of prayer please i'd like you to ensure you are part of everything that's happening right now because this transmission is about to help you grow and transform you to a better version of yourself ensure that you have liked and so you know uh, those of you who are here for the first time make sure you subscribe uh, to the channel because there's so much so much in store for you but most importantly ensure that you share the link with as many as you can um, let's be sure that we get as many to be part of this session today i'd like us to begin with a word of prayer father we thank you for everyone that is listening right now you are the fountain of wisdom you are the source of all wisdom and knowledge and we are here for growth for transformation for edification for personal development that you will take us to better versions of ourselves. Open our eyes to comprehend great truths, great truths that will change our lives. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. So we'll get right to it. I'd like you to know, I want, I want to really promise you that every session uh, is strategic. Every session uh, on this broadcast is strategic towards, like I said, personal development, growth, transformation and um, a lot of things that will help for your build up as uh, we continue as a matter of fact we uh, very soon will get to um, a season where we'll, we'll talk about ministry for those of us who are into ministry we'll talk about leadership and so many things just to see that we grow holistically and that, our, that we improve you know and get better and better as we uh, dwell on this session you know, it's about growth, and that's why it's a mentorship uh, platform. And I'm so glad that you are here. Well, in the last two Fridays, uh, I would say that what we have been doing is targeted towards um, self-discovery. We started by talking about the called ones and the sent one. And I spoke to us about, you know, that every one of us children of God, we are called by God out of the world, out of the world systems, out of our tribes and different nations. And... Um, we are called for God to build us, to prepare us, to make us uh, before commissioning us into his assignment for us. So there is always a difference between the season when you are called by God and the season when you are sent by the Lord to undertake a task or an assignment. And then last week we talked about predestined for his glory. And we, we, we looked a little into what the concept of predestination and how that it is possible for the destiny and the life of an individual to be summarized and to be known even before that person comes on earth and you see that brings us into the understanding of god's perfect plan for all things that before he created all things he had everything planned out and it will be important that when you come on the scene you connect with your creator to find out why you are here to unlock the purpose for your existence which will drive you towards the fulfillment of that purpose and a god-ordained destiny and today i'm going to share on something very exciting and i believe that you know connecting today with the last two fridays we generally are looking at uh, what I would call uh, self-discovery you know these are uh, sessions towards discovering who you are discovering yourself your personality and building and developing it you know in a very very important important and useful manner I want to talk to us today about pursuing the knowledge of God pursuing the knowledge of God you see many people don't understand that um, the key to knowing yourself is to knowing the one who created you. It's in our knowledge of God that we are discovered. You know, it's like a mirror. You look at a mirror to see who you are. So when you want to know who you are, when you want to know what kind of personality you have, you firstly must create with your you must you must connect with your creator you will need to know god in a certain way because as you get to know god you begin to discover yourself in the knowledge of him because every one of us were created by god for a purpose every one of us our personality our life our purpose are all a derivative of you know the greatness and the personality of god and so it's important that in knowing your God, you discover who you really are. So that's why I want to talk to us today about pursuing the knowledge of God.
God. And it's going to be interesting. Make sure that you stay glued to your devices right now because it's about to get really, really interesting. Let's read from the Bible a few portions of it and then we'll begin to talk about this in detail. Hosea chapter 6. Hosea chapter 6. Hosea chapter 6 from verse 1. Hosea chapter 6 from verse from verse 2. I think we should just start from verse 2. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. Now verse 3 which is the main point of emphasis. He says let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth. Now I'm reading from the New King James translation of the Bible. Let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. That means that the knowledge of God is to be pursued. Is to be pursued. Generally, anybody who wants to grow will need to be devoted to learning and for you to learn you must take the form of a learner you must be humbled to receive from someone who is higher than you you must uh, submit yourself to the templates of learning submit yourself to um, the, 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 the methods with which you'll be able to come into acquaintance with the knowledge that you so wish to acquire. Now, when it comes to the knowledge of God, there is even more. The knowledge of God is not something you pick up simply because you go to a school. You can go to a school to study about a discipline. You can go to a school to study about plants, about animals, about one thing or the other. But when when it comes to knowing God, you will need to pursue this a point for a deliberate effort where you will need to pursue the knowledge of god you will need to it it takes it takes an act of your will it takes um it takes an act of your desire to press further in your quest to discover the knowledge of god and i believe this is the knowledge of all knowledge This is the height, the pinnacle of knowledge, the knowledge of God. And so where we read, it says, let us pursue the knowledge of God. I'll beg to read in another translation uh, because of some other words so you can have a better understanding of it. I'll beg to read in the NIV, the New International Version. It says, let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledging. Let us press on. Press on. So it becomes a deliberate attempt, you know, seeking the knowledge of God. Pursuing to know who God is. Because remember, the key to self-discovery is the knowledge of God. There's no way you grow in your knowledge of God that you don't discover who you are. Because he is the embodiment of all truth. God is the only one that can tell you the truth about you that nobody can tell you. God is the only one that sees you in a different way from others. You ask people's opinion about yourself, you are going to get one-sided or perspectives, uh, 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 views from individuals, what people think you are. But God will not tell you what he thinks you are. God will tell you who you are as he created you to be. You know, one time in the story of Jesus in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus asked his disciples, Whom do men say that I am? In other words, what have you heard about the opinion of men towards me? I I mean, you could look at all the opinions which were far from the truth. 
They said, some said you were Elijah, some said you were one of the prophets, some said you were this or that. They looked at what Jesus exhibited and gave uh, their opinion about him. But to find the real definition of who you are, you'd have to get that out of the mouth of God. And it can only happen when your life is all already geared towards a pursuit of intimacy with God. Getting to know God beyond the average. Getting to know God beyond the normal human threshold. That's what God wants. He says, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning and he will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain to the earth. That means that knowing God as you pursue the knowledge of God, there's going to be a reaction for that action. And the reaction is God releasing a dimension of his knowledge to you. I'd like to show you something here. Here the Bible is um, using a, a metaphoric language in verse 3 here. It uses rain, which is water, metaphorically to describe something. He will come to us like the rain. This is when we pursue the knowledge of the Lord. He will come to us like the rain. Like the latter and former rain to the earth. In other words, when we pursue the knowledge of God, God will release or reveal himself to us in the same similitude as when rain is released. And rain is water. It is the water, the rain, that comes and waters the ground so that they can be yield, so that they can be productivity. Now, I'm going to show you a scripture. That I, want, I want to bring out the use of metaphor in this verse. I'm going to show you a, a scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Watch this now. In verse 2, if from verse 1 to 2, watch this now. It says, Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Now, Moses wants to expose us to a kind of knowledge. So he's speaking. Because, of course, words are, you know, words are uh, the framework of knowledge. Words are the structure of information. Every information we receive is, is encapsulated in words. And Moses says, give ear to the words of my mouth. He says, let my teaching drop as the rain. My speech distill as the dew. As raindrops on the tender herb and as showers on the grass. He says, I'm about to teach you something. But it's going to come to you like rain. What does rain do? When it falls on the ground, it gives ability for yield, for productivity. You know, farmers go to plant because the rains have come and they are sure that their crops will grow. Now Moses is saying, I'm bringing a teaching to you that will impart your life with the ability, the potential to be productive in accordance to what you are about to learn. So when he uses the word rain or water, he's talking about a release of knowledge. So it's a metaphorical um, play of words here. A, a, you know, the release of knowledge just like the release of rain or just like the release of water. Now, let's go back to Hosea with this context so we can understand. Back to Hosea chapter 6 and verse 2. So we understand it better. Verse 3 rather, it says, Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain like the latter and the former rain to the earth. Now Moses said, my teaching will come to you like rain. It will be released to you like rain. In other words, this is a teaching that will expose you to knowledge that will ignite something in you. Knowledge that will, that will, that will ignite a potential for productivity. So this is not just vague knowledge. This is knowledge that is capable of transforming you to becoming. This is knowledge that is able to produce something out of you. We are dealing with the knowledge of God now. 
not just the knowledge of some invention or some plant or some um, field in science or something. We are dealing with the knowledge of the Creator. Knowledge that is knowledge indeed. So, when, 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 we, when we pursue the knowledge of God, just the way rain is released, God begins to release knowledge of himself to us in layers, in dimensions. And this knowledge, when we receive it, it comes to transform us and it gives us the ability to carry, you know, uh, to become productive, the potential to become yielding, to become productive. That is knowledge that makes you what it says. That means that, number one, when you pursue the knowledge of God, you endear yourself to God. You become endearing to God. You become close to God. You, you get into a kind of a relationship with God. Number two, when you pursue the knowledge of God, this relationship that you now have gives you access to the release of the knowledge of God to you. Number three, this knowledge that is released to you comes to transform you into what it says. So every body of knowledge that comes from God to a human being has the capacity to transform that human being to become what it says. So this is not the knowledge you just put in your head and you, con you, you continue with your life. No. It's a knowledge that begins to change you to look like what it says. For instance, if you pursue the knowledge of God's power, after a while you will discover that as God releases uh, the knowledge of his power to you, you will begin to have the expression of this power. It's a knowledge that will materialize in your life. You will begin to find it manifesting because the knowledge of God is experiential. I wish you can write that down. The knowledge of God is experiential. Is experiential. It's not just something you know and then you get on with other things. No. The end is to bring you to a place of experience. It's tangible. So it can, you can prove it if it is true or not. The knowledge of God is experiential. And God wants to release the knowledge of himself to us. Now, the bottom line is that we must pursue. We must pursue. In other words, just because you are related to God as a, a child of God doesn't mean that uh, you, even if you have the access to the knowledge of God, doesn't mean that it will just come freely to you or it will come unconsciously to you. No. no. God will have you seek Him. He will have you pursue Him. It's almost as if God will not communicate certain things to us, especially about ourselves, until we seek Him, until we go to Him, until we pursue Him. No university is going to come to your house to tutor you in a, in a field of discipline. No. You'll have to go to the university or the college or wh whatever body of institution you are going to. So, if you don't pursue the knowledge of God, if you don't declare your interest in knowing God by pursuing His knowledge, there's no way He will release it to you. Just the same way the reason why we have rainfall, the reason why we have rainfall is because of the continuous uh, process of water cycle. That the rain that actually falls from the atmosphere, most of it is gotten from the ground, evaporated to the atmosphere, condensed, and it falls back. So you see, it's our hunger to pursue God that in turn sparks a reaction from God to release his knowledge to us. Let me show you something. In Proverbs, I call it the book of wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 25, this is the writing of someone who was termed the wisest king on earth. Someone who God gave wisdom to Solomon. Proverbs 25 verse 2. It says, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. 
It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. So God takes pleasure in hiding things, not from us, but for us. Because if he was just to leave it open or plain before us, we will not treasure and value it. Everything that a man seeks after or pursues, he ends up developing uh, 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 a worthy attachment to those things. He develops um, a, a, a treasurable acceptance to those things. You value what you pursued. You value what you sought after. But whatever you didn't seek after that just comes to you, you may not even understand the true worth of that thing. So you won't even value it. So that's why above all knowledge, the knowledge of God is hidden from man. So that man can pursue it. It's not something you can learn in a school. It's not something you can learn in an institution somewhere. It's something that you have to be exposed to by God himself by the parameters that he uses. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search. And remember that in Revelations chapter 1, verse 6, and in chapter 5, verse 10, that we have been made priests and kings when we were redeemed through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, we were redeemed as kings. Now, this means that we have the potential, we have the desire and the thirst in us for knowledge. We have the thirst in us to search out something. So God planted that desire in our hearts to search out the unknown so that in our desperation to seek, we'll begin to look for him. And we'll begin to pursue the knowledge of him. So that in response, he can reveal himself to you. God wants to reveal himself to mankind. Without the revelation of God, man, the existence of mankind is in itself vague. It's in itself uh, 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 futile. Anything existing apart from the knowledge of God is a futile existence. But before we can receive that, revelation of the knowledge of God we must pursue, we must search out. One more scripture and then I'll tell you a few things and we are done. Acts chapter 17 Acts chapter 17 Acts chapter 17 This is a story of Paul the apostle traveled to a city called Athens, saw that they were very religious and they were given to idols and the worship of a god here or there. They believed in mystical things and all of that. But they were void of the knowledge of the true God. And so Paul used that uh, weakness, that insufficiency, that lack that they had as a bait to introduce them to the knowledge of God. And Paul began to give them a speech. And I want us to read from verse 24. He says, God who made the world and everything in it, who since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. Why? So that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. That they should seek the Lord. So everything about creation is pointing us to this one path that there is a God behind everything you see behind the wonders of the natural world the earth and its inhabitants the terrestrial activity going on the universe the galaxy the space above us all the planets every wonderful thing of nature we find is 
a, a, a means to lure us to a path to seek the knowledge of the God who is the creator of all these things. He says in verse 27, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him. So God wants us to seek him. Let me tell you something. Even the complexities of life, even the problems you face and the things that happen around you, um, part of the purpose for these is so that we can find God behind all of these find the simplicity of his wisdom behind the complexities of life find the value of the solution he offers within the problems you find yourself so everything we go through is an opportunity to discover the knowledge of god at every point of our lives you can write that down you can type it in the comment section everything we go through is an opportunity to discover the knowledge of God at every point of our lives. When you go through disappointments, it's an opportunity for you to enter a school of knowledge, a knowledge of God, experiencing a God in the midst of situations. What will he do if he was in that mess like you? What will he counsel you to do? When you go through a season of learning, there is something about God you are exposed to knowing. When you go through a season of suffering, one of the things that you will know about God in a season of suffering is patience. That patience is His virtue and He wants us to develop it. So everything we go through in life is an opportunity for us to be schooled in the knowledge of God wonderful 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 thought there if you know that then you you will take advantage of every experience you have when you know that everything we go through is an opportunity for us to experience the knowledge of god in another way and remember i said the knowledge of god is experiential it's not just you know a compendium of information that you will attach to your reasoning no no there's an experiential aspect of it there is a practicality that you find as you quest towards the knowledge of God. So every opportunity, everything we go through is an opportunity for us to learn more of the knowledge of God. He wants to be sought after. He wants to be known. He created us to know Him. And it's in knowing Him that you discover who you are. It's in knowing Him that you discover what He created you to be. It's in knowing him that you discover that your personality naturally is a derivative of him. That we were created in his image and in his likeness. Many people try to change who they are without understanding the fact that God created you that way to exhibit a knowledge of himself. So God wants to use your life to bequeath knowledge to another human being to another community of people, to another individual. Someone is going to know more about God through some of the things that are positioned in your life. And that's, that's really, really the root of self-discovery. What a wonderful thing to know. What a wonderful thing. It means that you will profit from every situation you find yourself. It means that you will gain from every circumstance that you come through. There's always the knowledge of God behind every experience that I go through in life. There are lessons to learn. And these lessons are a pointer to a body of knowledge transmitted from God to me so that I can know my Creator and know Him better. What a wonderful, wonderful and insightful uh, thought to hold on to. Now, Finally, before we round up, when you pursue the knowledge of God, there are four basic things that you will need to discover. There are four basic things that you will understand to know if uh, your pursuit of the knowledge of God was legitimate, to know if the knowledge that you stumbled upon was truly of God. There are four things 
that you would find four things that you will discover and we're going to talk a bit about it today but we are going to elaborate on it next week when you pursue the knowledge of god to be sure that you have acquired the knowledge of god and that you are knowing god because knowing god is knowing yourself these four things you must find number one if you pursue the knowledge of god you must know his nature you must know his nature number two you must know his character number three you must know his ways number four you must know his will his nature introduces you to who god is his character introduces you to what he does his ways introduces you to how he does what he does and his will introduces you to his perfect plan concerning you a healthy pursuit of the knowledge of god will always stumble on these four things you will always be accurate when your pursuit of god is hinged upon this four the knowledge of his nature which is knowing who god is the knowledge of his character knowing what god does the knowledge of his ways knowing how he does what he does and the knowledge of his will knowing his ultimate and divine plan and this will lead us to an amazing field of discovery that i believe will change your paradigm will change your perspective about god about life and will begin to give you a holistic view of what the true knowledge of god really is and remember i told you that the knowledge of god is such that transforms you i'm telling you as you know god unknown to you you are being transformed because the knowledge is living it's inside of you that's the thing about god everything that proceeds from him is living it's active hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says that the word of god is alive and powerful it is living it has a life of itself when it comes into you it begins to compromise every part of you to subscribe and to submit to that life and that is when true transformation happens the greatest change that can ever happen is the transformation of a man into becoming like his creator and that's what god wants to do with us this season i'm so glad that you have learned something today i'm so glad that perhaps i've challenged you perhaps i've opened up your mind uh, stretched you a little bit to begin to see the importance of the knowledge of god and and by the time we're done with this next week many of you will begin to experience uh changes in your mindset and your thought pattern your paradigms will begin to change about yourself about life about god and about everything that he has created i'll give you a story before we go i read this story many years ago um, when i was at elementary school when i was in elementary school uh, and this story has stayed with me most times when i'm teaching about the knowledge of god or building a relationship with god i will often refer to this story that there were six blind men who went to see an elephant and notice the story says the, the six of them are blind even though they are men they are matured in their reasoning and in their cognition uh, cognition but they were all blind physically when the first one touched the elephant he described the elephant as a spear because he touched the tusk of the elephant. The second one touched the tail of the elephant and described the elephant as a rope. The third one touched the side of the elephant, which is huge and very strong, and described the elephant as a wall. W A L L. The fifth one touched the nose the trunk of the elephant and described the elephant as a snake the sixth one touched the ears of the elephant and shouted that the elephant looked like a fan because the ears of an elephant are very large as a matter of fact when veterinarians are working on an elephant maybe performing a surgery or something when they have administered anesthesia and finished working on the animal there is a way they resuscitate the elephant by flapping the ears again and again 
for the anesthesia to wear off and so the elephant can become conscious again. And then these six guys all began to argue with their views. Everybody postulated that their view was the correct view. And they went back home vague of the holistic knowledge of who an elephant is. And that's the state of many people in life today. Many of us have different perspective of our view of God. Some of us interpret God through the lens of culture. Some of us interpret God through the experiences we have in our family. There are many people who don't believe God can be a father to them. Maybe because they were void of the experience of having a father or they had a tyrant for a father. So they never believed that God is a loving father. Many of us interpret the knowledge of God from the lens of our different experience. But you see, your experience regardless cannot stand the chance to have a definite encounter, a definite relationship with God. There's nothing as God introducing himself to you. And just for the sake of someone who is watching this live stream now or who will watch the rebroadcast, if you want to know God, God will have to introduce himself to you. Knowing God begins by having a relationship with Him. It is that relationship that sustains your knowledge of God all through. And perhaps you don't even have a relationship with God. Maybe you are watching the rebroadcast of this live transmission of much later. I'd like to lead you into a relationship with God so that your life can be set towards experiencing a release of the knowledge of God so that you can embark on a healthy search of the knowledge of God. I'd like you to just repeat this prayer after me and mean it from the depth of your heart because your life is about to change. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you as my Lord and Savior. I surrender my heart and my life to you. Help me to know the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made that prayer, you are born again, you are now in a relationship with God, and you now have the automatic license to be introduced into the knowledge of God. Knowledge that is knowledge indeed. And I thank you for making that decision. Somewhere at the description box, you can do well to either email me, my email will be there, send a mail that you have received Jesus into your life and that you want to know God. And then I'll have a personal time to talk to you or you can perhaps call our public relations line and we'll have a way to ensure that you grow, that you are discipled, you are mentored methodically and holistically in the knowledge of God. Thank you so very much. And I want to say thank you to every one of us for tuning in, whatever country you're watching this from, whatever time zone you belong to, this is a beginning for you to a life of self-discovery and personality development. God wants to make you a better version of you and I believe that you will as we continue this journey of uh, personal transformation and self-discovery. Thank you for joining us in this online mentorship session. It's my joy that you are part of this. Do well to share this link with your friends. Do well to talk to somebody about this uh, broadcast. We are here 7 p.m. Nigerian time GMT plus one every Friday and it's getting more exciting by the day next week I'm going to talk to you elaborating on the four things I spoke about that will anchor your knowledge of God his nature his character his ways and his will and you don't want to miss it for anything and I believe that maybe next week will also begin to stream from my Facebook account. Maybe next week or the week after that, we may also stream from my Facebook account. For now, we'll just do on YouTube, but maybe very soon, we're also going to stream uh, on my Facebook account. So you can go to Facebook, Apostle Jonathan Lagan. That's my page. Um, and you'll get the sign that authenticates it, my page. So you can follow. And I'll see you. Um, on that page very soon. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in and see you the better version of you next time. Thank you. Shalom. Bye-bye.